Hey folks, I'm Alex and you're on the Nobby Brick channel. We are in the middle of the holiday season, that's why today I would like to show you this very thematic, friendly and festive LEGO icon set number 10308 Holiday Main Street. It features a couple of buildings decorated for Christmas, a part of the city street and a street car, which by the way can be powered up. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Ok, the set contains 1514 pieces, it's a pretty big one. It was released a couple of months ago in October 2022 and its official price is 100 US dollars or euros. Not bad at all for the given number of pieces. Inside the box we find 11 plastic bags full of bricks and plates, 7 of medium size and 4 small ones, and there is also a 6x16 plate of dark red color that comes as a separate piece and not included in the any bag. The set comes with 4 books with building instructions. Each book provides guidelines for a single big component like a street car or a particular building, so you can get together with your family, kids or close ones and spend a nice and cozy evening building the holiday street. The smallest book is the first one that contains instructions for the train stop and the holiday tree. Its pages not only have smaller format than the pages of other books, but also the number of them is lower, 37 pages. The second book is the second in size as well. Here we have 67 pages to build a streetcar, the third and the fourth books have a similar number of pages, 75 for the music store and 79 for the games and toy store building. Also we have some stickers here, they are numbered from 1 to 11 and there are 14 stickers in total, I love them. They are not just some 2-3 colored signs or surface patterns, but they are very detailed and colorful and actually make a big difference when applied. Let's take a look into the variety of pieces that we have in this set. I didn't find any new ones here and it looks like I've seen all of them before, but according to Brickling some pieces have been introduced for this set in new colors. For example, it seems like that's the first time we see this teapot in sand green color this magic wand in transparent yellow or this 2x3x2 cupboard in sand blue. But we have more than 1500 pieces here and a great variety of them in general. For example, pieces that you can see in modular buildings like doors and windows, frames, cupboards, drawers, mercenary bricks, arches, pieces used in trains like wheels and wheel holders, a lot of accessory pieces, leather, clock faces, violin, guitar, saxophone, teapot, cups, a bird, money paper bill and others, there are a lot of them. And of course minifigures. Minifigures are unique to this set and every single book contains at least one minifigure to build. So let's talk about the building process and I will speak about minifigures more when we work on the specific part of the set. The first book and the first stage definitely feels like an introduction, like a warm up if you wish. We start the stage with building three minifigures, they're all great. The first one is this lady carrying two shopping bags. The pieces that she's built of are actually quite rare. The torso with the green sweater print was used in only one other set before. The hair piece with the hairs falling over the shoulders and the dark red beanie was used in one of the individual LEGO minifigure packs. I think it was series 22 and no other sets. And this dual sided hat piece was used in only three other sets. In general, that's a very unique combination, right? The second minifigure is another lady also carrying two shopping bags. It's less unique in terms of individual pieces, but the torso with the magenta sweater pattern was also used in only one set before. It was the freight train set released early in 2022. I have this set but haven't built it though. The minifigure has a dual sided hat with two facial expressions, one happier than the other, I definitely like it. The third minifigure here is this kid carrying the ladder in this hand. This minifigure is probably my favorite of the set. There is nothing really special about it except for the torso piece maybe. It appeared in just two other sets. But there is something in this minifigure that appeals to me. Probably it brings me back to my own childhood. I had a similar puffy jacket and a hat with ear flaps. Also I like that they made him wear gloves. See those grey hands instead of the classic yellow ones? Awesome minifigure. Ok, let's move on. As I said, there is not like something big as built during this stage. I'd rather see it as a few mini builds that will be used later to connect all the components of the set into a complete composition. So here we have this nice little red mailbox. It opens up and you can put a letter into it. It also has a postal service logo on its side made with this sticker. Next we build a part of the street that may serve as a streetcar stop. By the way, I just want to point your attention to how the designer presented the snow laying on all kinds of surfaces. See, it looks like in real life. 
like if the wind was blowing from one particular side, so the snow formed into piles on one side of fences, ground and mailbox more than on other sides. Very small, but definitely a thought through detail. And a street sign post. Nothing special about the post itself, but the clock and the Christmas ornament below it. Again, in real life I love to see such clocks in city historic downtowns. And the last mini build of the stage is the holiday tree. I must say I didn't like it at the beginning. It's built with the use of this bright green and dark green wedge plates. And I would prefer a more traditional, if it's okay to say about LEGO, design using flower stem pieces to represent fur needles. But I understand it would be hard to decorate it in this case. So I'm fine with it. The tree has some volume and feels to be a solid build. Golden stars, yellow one by one round transparent plates and the magic wand piece on top of the tree serve as nice decorations here. And that completes the first book and the first stage. The second book is all about the streetcar. I am pretty sure for some of you that would be a centerpiece of the whole set. I thought it would be for me too, but actually I have mixed feelings about it. But first things first. Let's take a look at the streetcar driver conductor minifigure. Of course the most interesting part of it is its torso. It's a new piece introduced this year and it appeared in just one other set before. We've seen it in LEGO Ideas Lighthouse set. Neat light grey tie, nice golden pocket watch, overall very classy and stylish torso and the minifigure in general. I truly like it. The streetcar looks awesome and I think that's the first streetcar ever officially released by LEGO. It came out very colorful and festive. Outside the car is decorated with Christmas ornaments. The stickers used for banners of a music store and a toy shop are very detailed and look great. There are also two Christmas wreaths here at the front and at the back of the car. Probably choosing the dark green quarter tiles was not the best idea to represent evergreen branches, but it's okay. In the front part of the car, inside, we have a double-sided brown couch for the passengers and the black lever that would be used to operate the car. The lever is not doing anything, of course, it's just a single piece. In the back half of the car, there is a lot of empty space for the power hub, if you decide to motorize the vehicle. To be honest, when I was buying this set, I thought that this block and other pieces required for the motorized functions and lighting were included into the set, because all they are shown on the box and the standard powered up stamp is there too. And I remember being surprised that the price of $100 felt a bit lower than it should be. But I need to learn to read small print. And here it says ready for powered up, not powered up from the box. Aha, uh -huh, now the price makes sense. But I still feel like I was tricked. And that's probably one of the reasons why I have mixed feelings about the street car. Another reason is that I couldn't find a place to put a driver minifigure inside the vehicle. I mean, it's weird that you don't have a spot for a minifigure next to the control lever or you cannot put it in between the lever and the couch. The minifig doesn't fit in the front part of the car as well. I can place it on the seat, but I don't think that the driver is supposed to sit. So yeah, I can put it in a few places, but it either doesn't stand properly or its posture seems unnatural. And that confused me. Apart from these two gimmicks, the streetcar looks awesome. It can be used with the standard train tracks, which are also not included by the way, and would be a great addition to your own LEGO city as a tourist attraction. Moving over to the third book and the third big component of the set, and that's a building with a music store on the ground floor and the kitchen space above it. As with the other components, let's start with the minifigure. Here we've got a music store owner. Overall, I'd say he looks clean, tidy and smart. The hairs are swept back and he also has sideburns. And as for the torso, he is wearing a red shirt with a tan tie and dark blue pants suspenders. In my opinion, the minifigure does fit the music store perfectly. So let's talk about the music store itself. After putting together the base of the building and outlining its walls, we start working on the interior of the store. And of course we expect to have a lot of musical instruments inside. Here on one side of the room, we put mini builds of a bass drum and a cymbal. Next to them we install a large shop window. I like the size of it. It allows you to put a violin and a white guitar pieces on display like it could be done in a real store. And they are actually very well visible from the outside. Next we put a saxophone on a stand near the opposite wall, build a cash register and put it on a desk in the middle of the room. Above it there is a piano keyboard. And next to the counter we've got a small cylindrical container with a selection of drumsticks. To complete the interior of the store we put a couple of music themed posters on the walls made with stickers. 
I must say, the store looks absolutely fantastic. I like that we have so many details and accessory pieces in such a small space. Outside the store we install the entrance door, a few construction elements like light grey columns, an arch above the door and the gutter, a couple of Christmas decorations and the red sun blind above the shop window. As a final touch to the facade of the first floor, we are adding a couple of wall lamps to the right and left from the entrance door and the music store sign made with another sticker. Now moving over to the second floor of the building. Here we assemble a part of someone's apartment. In the left part of the room there is a kitchen. Here we have a cabinet and a cupboard with white doors, a stove with a teapot on it, those are the pieces in new colors remember, and an oven with a transparent door. I like how they use this bright yellow 2x2 tile with the printed honeycomb pattern for the wall tiling. Nice! In the center of the room we set up a table with a couple of cups and pastries and a holiday candle. Next to it we put two chairs. The last detail of the interior is this picture of some snowy house that very looks like the Lego gingerbread house set retired in 2021. Nice easter egg for those who remember. Awesome! The only few things left to complete the building are the roof with some snow piles resting on it and more decorations to the facade. And it's done! Love it! very satisfying build. Hey folks, I just want to make a short pause here to ask you to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video or find it helpful. Your reactions help this channel to grow. Thank you. We now can move to the last component of the set, which is the second building with the toy store. And this building has its own minifigure, a store owner. Brown legs, dark orange hair piece with a large bun. The torso has a nice print of white shirt and the vest with orange and yellow diamonds. By the way, the torso piece is not very common and used in only one other set, the train station. I reviewed this nice set not so long ago, you can find the video on the channel. Okay, as I mentioned already, we have a toy store on the first floor of the building. The only actual toy, I mean the actual accessory piece that we have here is this bunny. The rest of the toys are micro builds, meaning they are built from few Lego pieces rather than a single piece. Look at this train engine. It consists of just 8 pieces, the largest of which is the red 1x3 plate. Another micro build is this robot, and we use only 5 pieces for it. Using the binoculars instead of its head reminded me about Wally. -E. You may know what I'm talking about, the animation movie by Pixar and Disney. Anyway, we also create some other items like toy cars and a pyramid and put it all together on the stand in the right half of the room. It's absolutely fantastic that you can create something so authentic and recognizable at the same time with such a small number of parts. On the left side of the room we put together a counter and a register, put a money bill next to it, hang a clock on the wall behind it and we're done with the interior of the toy store. As for the second floor, here we create a space that looks like a small bedroom. It includes a bed covered with a turquoise blanket, a nightstand with a drawer and a red lamp on it, a small rug in the center of the room. And I'd say the most exciting part of this interior is a mini Christmas tree. Look at that! Isn't it cute with a little star on top and a few tiny present wraps under it? I am wondering now if any of the gifts match the items from the wish list that is also there on the nightstand. Overall, nice and cozy apartment. Let's talk about the exterior of the building real quick. The building itself is quite different from the previous one different colors, different pieces and techniques. When the first floor was complete, I caught myself thinking that the color selection, a combination of dark green and red, was very alike to the buildings we see nowadays in some historical city centers. Buildings that were built 100-150 years ago. Awesome! I like this kind of attention to details. Other than that, we also have the facade decorated with the Christmas garland and the wreath. As a final touch to the building, we put the small bird on one of the window seals. And that's it for the set! I truly enjoyed building it. The LEGO Holiday Main Street set shows us a charming winter street featuring a couple of buildings and a snow-topped streetcar. When I was buying this set I felt a bit skeptical because I don't really like the LEGO buildings when they design them the same way as in many city sets. You know, I call them transparent because they don't have back walls. And initially the streetcar was a big reason for me to buy this set, but over the course of building I changed my perception of it completely. The streetcar turned out to be not so exciting for me, and both music and toy stores and the apartments above them with their interiors felt like bigger modular buildings from other LEGO icon sets. 
It's not the exact experience, but the overall feeling about it is the same. And this set is smaller and twice less expensive compared to the police station or assembly square or new jazz club or some other module building. Overall, I'd say it's a very good balance between the price and amount of fun you get. And that's all I have to say. As usual, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.